All right. Hey guys, I got Matt Nix back. We're gonna talk to our new season one. So how's it been? And we just had season one in. So what's next or do we know what's next yet? Well, Disney Plus's process is, um, you know, they sort of wait until, not just until the whole season is aired, but until the whole season is aired plus a few weeks. So okay, uh, with really all of their shows, they've been waiting um, mm -hmm. except for one, I think it was uh, Loki. I think they they said something earlier, but I think that was mm -hmm. kind of because it was the biggest show of all time. Right. Um, but yeah, every everybody else uh, has to wait. They waited a little bit, so you know uh -huh. we'll see. We're excited. That it feels like yeah. uh, you know the the fans of the show um, like people got it the way we wanted them to get it. Like the it it, yeah. it was good. It did what we wanted it to do. So yes. um, hopefully we'll get a second season. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping. Do you have any plans to bring anybody back from your crew? You talked about that before. Are you going to try to bring some people back or can you bring anybody back? Our crew? Uh, like Burn Notice or anything, some of those people? Oh, yeah. Or? I mean, that's, uh, as I, I think I said before, uh, you know, with COVID basically. Right. Um, you know, sort of, I, I have my my actors that I work with in mm -hmm. different shows and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I always like meeting new people, but I, I like working with some of the same people as well. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with Canada uh, and the quarantine, we really couldn't do any of that. So, right. So, I mean, we got to see kind of where it is. You know, if we get a season two, where are we shooting it? Is it in Canada again? I mean, I think there's a pretty good chance it will be, but then there won't be a quarantine, hopefully. hopefully so, right. uh, yeah, I mean, I would I would love to, to bring that would back. Be cool. So it's yeah. certainly fun. How was it starting a new show again? And with COVID, you talked about how hard it was. Was it easier as you did it or was COVID still an issue? I mean, COVID is always an issue. I think that, yeah. uh, right. you know, what COVID, uh, <laughs> I mean, if you think about like across the world, you know, mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways, I mean, it certainly stopped some things, but as things have continued, I was actually just at a museum earlier and it's like, okay, about half the things in the museum, all the auto auditory things, everything you had to touch. Well, you can't do that anymore. So it's no. basically like, yeah, you can still do things. They just suck a little more. Uh -huh. And so that's kind of what the experience of, of shooting a, uh, a show during COVID is. You can still do I'm it. sure, yeah. It's just that everybody's got to get tested and that takes a bunch of time. And then, you know, it used to be that lunch worked, you know, there was a big spread and now everybody's got to have their individual boxes mm -hmm. so you can do it and you kind of got used to it but um Still, yeah. everybody's running around in um kind in of... face masks and stuff like mm -hmm. that it is yeah. what it is it is what it is for I sure was definitely grateful to to be able to do a show at all so uh, right that. exactly so many shows had such a hard time coming back because of it it just like took everything you know, for everybody, and it's like, oh man, and then yeah, no, getting delayed, and I'm going, this, this kind of does sort of suck. Well, it also makes everything more expensive. I mean, that's oh, I'm idea. sure, yeah. And for they sure. they sort of would have a special budget for it, but at the same time, it's you know, like it was sort of brutal. I think, particularly on shows that were kind of on the margins, where people were like, well, we could pick them up or whatever, but then it's like, okay, well, we if we pick them up. They're going to cost twenty percent more, so mm -hmm. it's particularly hard. Yeah, yeah. I'm still mad that they axed Prodigal, but praying that somebody brings it back. I was not happy. <laughs> yeah, no. It's. I mean, that's a great example of a show that had a devoted, yes, uh, group of fans sure. and stuff like that. And, and then they're like, "We're not going to." I'm like, "What? Yeah. Really? <laughs> don't take my good shows. You can take those. <laughs> just don't take those." Yeah, that's. I don't like that when they do yeah. that. No, it's it's a thing though. I know, and it's all. I think it all comes down to how much is it going to cost us because it used to be shows stayed on, and now it's they're expensive. So they decide, okay, these are too expensive. We're just going to take them off. But then it leaves everybody else, you know, that liked them, either out of work or people are mad because they're not on anymore. Well, I think what's tough is once upon a time, the the sort of rules of the race were clear. Mm -hmm. right clearer right. where it was sort of okay you've got you know four networks or whatever and, and you've mm -hmm. got to have the ratings you got to beat the other um you know and then and there were time slot games and stuff like that but now it just feels like uh you know 
you think Disney Plus is a great example. Like, what are their metrics? Right. Well, um, hard to say because, you know, part of it is how many people watch. Part of it is how many people watch it twice. How Part of it is mm -hmm. how many people watch it when it's not being advertised. Like, yeah. how many people watch multiple episodes in a row? All of the rules are just up in the air. And so for, <laughs> for other shows, it's like, okay, you know, what matters? Is it the ratings of the, the you know, the on-air ratings the day they, they air it? Or is it, you know, how After, will it the streaming? Yeah. It's just, it's mm -hmm. so hard to know. It is weird because a lot of stuff I've seen it go toward streaming and no more cable. But cables, that's why we cut cable because it was getting ridiculous. I'm like, we're just going to stream it. Like, I'll just stream them and watch them and pray that well, they stay on the air. You're in the same position as as so many people because cable, I think, is like, you know, now sort of seen as, you know, at best a supplier to the streaming services. You know, mm -hmm. so like might as well just. I think on. one of the shows on CBS, even isn't it Seal Team? They're going, they're doing like four episodes on network, and then they're going to Paramount Plus because yeah. I just saw that the other day. So I see where they're just kind of phasing that out, kind of. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's uh, it, it's a weird. Uh, I think it's a Chinese curse. May you live in interesting times. Uh, uh -huh. It's uh, kind of like a weird animal. It's like, what is this streaming? You know, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, CBS. It's a great example. Like, mm -hmm. it was all about CBS All Access, and then you know, Paramount bought it. Like, yeah. Paramount buys it, and then you know, within a year, it's Paramount Plus. And okay, uh, didn't see that coming, but here it no. is. No. Yeah. Where are we going with this? And what's going to be on network and what's going to be streaming? Yeah. What irritates me is there's so many different streaming services anymore. I'm like, could y'all just put it on one and let me pick the ones I want? But but that's what everybody wanted with cable as well. I mean, they wanted a la carte yeah. services. Pick and I think the want. problem is like, you know, the way you make money as a streaming service is, you know, you capture eyeballs. There's a show that you have to see. Mm-hmm. You got to yeah. sign up and then there you go. I mean, I think that's, that's a good example. I mean, it also skews like how much is a show worth when you think about like right. okay, Apple plus has Ted Lasso. Suddenly mm -hmm. everybody needs Apple plus because everybody's talking about Ted Lasso. Right. Not see Ted Lasso. And so they're signing up for Apple plus just for Ted Lasso. Exactly. Yep. So when you think about that, like, uh, you know, compare that with like Squid Game. Okay, everybody already has Netflix, but Squid Game is the most popular show in the world for the time that it's on, you know, for, for oh, this period right, of time. Right, right. So is Squid Game worth more than Something Ted else. Lasso because yeah. it's yeah. the most popular show in the world, even though people aren't so much signing up for Netflix to see Squid Game? Or mm -hmm. is Ted Lasso worth more because people are signing up to see Ted Lasso? I have no idea. I don't know what that answer to that is. What made them decide to put it on Disney Plus? Was that like a, a strategy that they decided to put Turner Nooch on there? Or what was the deal? No, I mean, that was, I think that was always the plan. Um, kind of the plan because it's it's owned once 20th television where oh, my deal right. is right. Um, and Disney merged. Mm -hmm. Suddenly there was this whole library that opened up and yeah. then Disney right. needed, um, basically Disney Plus needed shows that were you know kind of family shows because mm -hmm. you know, they don't want to be the disney channel right, right. that's that's right. very much oriented just toward kids mm -hmm. um and they also can't just do star wars and marvel because yeah you know, those in a way those aren't really tv shows they're extensions of movies like mm -hmm. they're, mm -hmm. so you know then the question becomes okay you're coming out with something on disney plus I mean, you know, famously, one of Disney Plus's first shows was initially it was called Lo Love Simon, based on the movie Love Simon, and then it became oh, Love right. Victor, yep. and they moved it to Hulu. And oh, yep. when you think about it, it's like okay, so that's a show, you know, that has sex and sexuality as one of its you know major right. focuses, right? And you know, is that really the show that you want to be the first show that comes out on Disney Plus? Uh -huh. you know? And I think yeah. they were kind of like, well, maybe that's not exactly our brand. Mm -hmm. um, and so. so, yeah, I think I think Turner and Hooch was was like a um, 
the kind of show that makes sense on Disney Plus. Could you have it someplace else? Yeah, you could have it someplace else. But basically, you know, uh, people are going to see the Turner and Hooch box on their, you know, yep. their Disney Plus it's screen. On, it's on the front page, or it was when it was yeah. new episodes. Yep, because it was and shown before new. Yeah. But their kids are going to click on it, and they're not going to worry about that. They're going to be like, okay, right. oh, this is okay, yeah, you know, this yeah. is okay, and and that I think is kind of boils down to, um, to to the appeal. And then the other thing for me was. You know, one of the comments that I got most frequently about Burn Notice was that people watched it with their families oh. and that it was a show that sort of spanned generations. And one of the things that I said when I first pitched Turner and Hooch uh -huh. to Disney Plus was I was like, I, I think that people have this idea that a, a family show can't have action. A family show can't uh -huh. be exciting. A family show has to be all, you know, just straight down the middle all the time. And I, what I, I said, my experience as someone, you know, even doing the gifted or what, I, uh, uh, you know, right. but doing all these shows, I've had a lot of people say like people watch my shows with their families. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I've, I realized is, and, and what I pitched to Disney plus was like, I think it's more about at the end of the episode, there's nothing you have to sit down and explain to your children. You don't have to say, uh -uh. okay, let me tell you what rape is and how it happens and that kind of thing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But, you know, if if no kid is like, the bad guys were, you know, trying to rob that train and the good guys stopped them. Uh, no, kids are like, yeah, they're fine with that. You know, it doesn't matter. Okay, there was some gun gunshots. One of the bad guys got shot and he fell off the train. Like, they're not... Uh, they're not looking at that and going, I don't understand the world anymore. Mm -hmm. And that I think is kind of what the key, in, in my view, that's the key to family entertainment. Mm -hmm. I think so. Cause you can have action. There's nothing wrong with that. Like yeah. if you do it the right way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that's, it seems to work. So. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for doing this. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I appreciate it. No worries. Of course. Yeah. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Um, you got anything coming up? Or are you taking a little break or what you doing? No, I'm in uh, Louisiana right now. I'm shooting the pilot for uh, True Lies. Um, I heard something about that. I saw that. So wow. we're in the middle of scouting locations and getting, getting oh. everything set up. And so, uh, yeah, fingers crossed for that. So um, we'll, we'll be turning it into CBS at the end of this year. And uh, hopefully okay. CBS decides to go forward with it. So yeah. I'm excited. So is it going to be like a a sequel again or it's not a, no this is more of a traditional yeah so turner and hooch was kind of a sequel series right true right. lies is we kind of kicked that idea around but the problem is true lies really needs to be about a guy who's uh who's a spy whose family doesn't realize he's a spy right and it's a little much to say that that exact same thing happens twice mm -hmm. um and so uh, it's a different story than the movie, but it's related to the movie. Jim Cameron is a producer. Oh, cool. Uh, and cool. Uh, G, who directed uh, uh, Turner and Hooch, and is a, uh, mm -hmm. he's also a producer on it. Cool. And it's being directed right. by Anthony Hemingway. Um, and uh, it's been super exciting so far. So fingers crossed. Good. Let's hope it goes well. Yes. Thank you. I had heard something about it, but I didn't know if it was progressing or if it kind of stalled or where we were at with that one. So yeah. Oh, it did. COVID actually stalled it for a year. Did then, it? Okay. So they said, yeah, well, we'll we want to do it next round. Right. And I was like, sure, you want to do it next round. And then sure <laughs> enough, they were like, yeah, we're doing it next round. I was like, all right, great. All right. Because I remember the article came out like a long time ago. And I was like, okay, whatever happened to that? Where are we at? No, that never, ever happens. Nobody ever, <laughs> nobody no, ever. No, like they're just like, okay, we'll move on to something else. Well, that's good at least. Yeah, I'll yeah. take it. I'll take it. So, okay, well. Keep me posted. I will be oh. in attention. And you guys take care. Everybody stay safe during COVID. And thanks again for chatting. With thanks me. so I much. Appreciate it. appreciate it. Always a pleasare right, You take care. Right. Talk to you later. Yep. Bye. Okay, guys. There we go. Thanks again, Matt and Justice. Take care, everybody.